Hey, Sandy. Hi, Michelle. Hello. Here, I'm going to pause the recording. Wow. English. Yeah. In English, her name is Helen Harden, but she's uh, she died in 1984 at the age of, I think, 43. What was that name again? Uh, Helen Harden. Okay. And, and then her Pueblo name? Um, Tsetsawia. Uh... How do you spell that? <laughs> that Sawia. Okay, I'll make it up. Yeah, just um, make it just make it phonetic. You know, is but that, it's a, it's a, it's it's a T S E. Yeah, I got that part. Okay, um, Sawia. Um, S A W E W A. Okay, okay, that makes sense. Uh, is that a painting or? It's a painting. Uh, well, actually, it's a virtual painting that I just got online. And um, she died in 1983 or 84. I think it's 84 um, at a very young age. And she struggled her whole life with a sense of belonging because she was her father was um, European American and she was Pueblo. Her mom was Pueblo. And uh, she's from Santa Clara Pueblo. And um, so her whole life was actually uh, a really wonderful journey of spiritual connection so she she was radical in the sense that she veered away from traditions by painting a lot of kachinas or the mountain spirits as they call them in the south um, thank Michelle, you may i just um check on something here yeah. i um, resumed recording and then thank I, you um it's recording probably to the cloud and what i wanted to do was record to my hard drive so you had the the right the, so I think you can do that under more as a co-host. Uh, okay. Are you are you recording now or not? Yeah, it's showing me as recording to the cloud. Okay. 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 There we go. <laughs> Still getting the technical details worked out here. So. Um, Welcome everybody. We're we're about at our official start time here. Um, we're gonna do everything we can to to keep this as just a one hour conversation, recognizing that that's not nearly enough time for all of the wonderful people here and things that we want to say and learn from each other. But um, we will do what we can with the time that we have available. Um, <clears throat> So 
what I was hoping to do, I've got a little, just a little outline for us. Um, for the first 10 minutes or so, I just want to kind of go around um, and get everyone's response to the phrase, I see education for an ecological civilization as, um, but we're going to, we're going to do this um, carefully tracking time so that these don't spiral out of control. So this is just like a first taste. Um, so we'll do that for 10 minutes. Uh, then we're going to have 25 minutes in smaller breakout rooms. So we have a chance to get to know one another and talk a little bit more deeply um, and, and sharing ideas for that. Um, then we'll have some time for a report out and, um, and then time for uh, just kind of open conversation with the whole group. Uh, so with the intention to close right at the hour. Um, uh, 14 people had signed up for this. We've got nine so far. So we may have a few more coming in as we're doing our preliminaries, but I'd like to, to go ahead and get those started. And I uh, really want to offer some gratitude to Sylvia, who, who brought the idea for Education Commons together and uh, initiated um, this whole concept of, you know, we have so many powerful educators on the Deep Transformation Network. What are we going to do uh, as a group? Um, or at least that's that's my probably very skewed perspective on it. Um, so thank you, Sylvia. Do you want to say a little more before we get going? Yeah, I just want to say a couple of things very quickly. Um, I came into the Education Commons as a follower, not as an initiator, really following someone else in the network in its very inception who said, my God, we have so much expertise and lived experience and wisdom spread across many places and many disciplines in the network, you know, what can we do to kind of lift that up and, and integrate it and make of it, you know, other offerings that can help people, not just in the network, but in places all over the world, um, whether they're now in the network or not. So, so that was kind of the inception. And I did take the initiative last spring to host a live event, that the record of which both on video and in notes is in the Education Commons group, and you've probably all maybe scanned it at, at some point. But if you remember, it was a big visioning. You know, there were, there were really big dreams and real heartfelt and kind of lifelong um, aspirations that people brought into that meeting. Um, and it was huge. I mean, it was meant to be a kind of uh, generation, generative dialogue to begin. And then the person that I followed um, really dropped out. Um, and, and I have felt um, like there's been this big um, this, this big subset in here that I haven't been helping. I've been in much more of a reflective space than a proactive space with it. And I've been doing a lot to host other things and to help other things on the network, generally for all members, but not so much in this common. So, so one of the questions that I bring into today is, is really, if the whole network is working as an education commons, do we need this group? And if so, how might we more sharply focus its charter, so to speak, um, mm -hmm. And, I, and I'm happy to talk more of that in the, either in breakout group and or in closing or post some more reflections on that. Um, but I really, I want to in turn thank Michelle, who's just kind of held me in this space of feeling now daunted while we've been trying to do things in all kinds of places on the network uh, and feeling, me feeling dismayed about what I haven't been able to kind of lift up and integrate and 
hold for everybody within the commons. So thank you everybody for today. I, I feel really glad of the chance to be in conversation with you all. Thank you, Sylvia. Um, also, Sylvia brought the really great idea of um, what you've been seeing a little bit in the, the monthly live sessions. Um, but if each of us can make a commitment to make notes in the chat. So as um, things come up that seem like really key ideas that you want to um, get recorded, um, just type that phrase in the chat, you know, um, so that we have that that additional record of what uh, what happened today. Um, okay, so um, again, this this first round, and I'm keeping an eye on the time and we've almost used all of it up, but that's okay. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is say that this is gonna be a one breath response. So, um, you know, so you got about 20 seconds and then and then I'm gonna cut you off. Um, and what we'll do is we'll, we'll go around um, and the first one to go, um, well, Carrie, did you have a quick question or? Just, that's me saying I'll go first and I'll you'll say go first. organization as vital. Okay. So education for an ecological civilization as vital. Um, so next I'm going to invite Nia and then Andrew and then Sarah. Uh, ecolo um, ecological education depends on what frame of reference you come to with. And um, so as an indigenous person, I come with that framework. So everything is connected, interconnected and interdependent. Great. I see education uh, as a um, citizen led massive movement to change the whole system that we're part of. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Andrew. So, um, I think so I think Sarah and then Nancy and then Lisa. So yeah, for uh, so education is for empowering uh, people on mass um, to equip them with solutions for the for this transformation. And Nancy? What the last two people said. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Lisa? I just was inviting David Militer, who lost track of this link. Uh, I'd say that the education question, it's echoing, it's vital for everyone, the young in education and everybody else. All right. And then um, I think it's uh, Sandy and Sylvia and me. Sandy, are you ready to go? Yeah, sure. Um, okay, so completely and utterly different to what we have now in any part of the globe um, and situated in a completely new worldview. Yeah, that's it. All right. I was going to say something similar that education for an edu ecological civilization challenges the implicit um, worldview of anyone, uh, of everyone there as a learner, and will change me and change all participants irrevocably. Oh, and now I have to think of a response. Education for an ecological civilization would mm, be a an across the lifetime affair that um, helps people to really reconnect with all of the living world um, and
be more innovative and and creative about responses uh, without taking um, the current culture as a given and as a norm. Okay, did we capture everybody's initial thoughts there? Oh, wow, thanks everybody for the um, for the great uh, recording work. So I'm gonna actually, to give us more time to talk, I'm gonna put us into three breakout rooms. Um, we'll, we'll still take uh, about 20 minutes and um, the instructions that I'd like to give you for that are uh, first that each person can can speak for four minutes to share their background and their key ideas for what the Education Commons on Deep Transformation Network might be. So a little bit of introducing yourself and a little bit of your initial thoughts on what the Education Commons on DTN would be for. Um, and then once everyone has had the chance to do that, uh, to go into conversation about what you've heard. Could, could I just ask a, a question, a practical question before we go in? Yeah. Um, do you know what kind of membership the Mighty Network actually is? Does it have a course platform ability? Because that might affect, affect my questions within the breakout room, <laughs> my, my thoughts within the breakout room. Yes, it does. Um, yeah. it, it does have the capability to offer courses. And Jeremy Lent has also confirmed that so does the Leology Institute. So that's also a potential partnership. Um, OK, thank you. All right. Okay, I'm going to um, start these in just a moment. And uh, here we go into breakout rooms. And if if everyone can help help me remember to turn my recording back on when we come out from breakout rooms, you'll get a reminder about the closing time. But again, uh, starting with about uh, four minutes each to just share some background and get to know each other and your key thoughts. Good. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. I know that um, breakout rooms, no matter what you do, it's never enough time. So my thank only you complaint for... is we needed three hours at least, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, well, let me add to that and say out of our breakout group, we thought having monthly circles like this, so we mm. could have those three hours over the next, easily over the next quarter was one good direction to proceed in. So, um, so there were, there were three rooms. And I'm going to invite um, whoever wants to start up and talk about what happened in their room. And I'm just noticing that somehow all of my chat disappeared, which is upsetting. Um, and it's not letting me see my chat. OK. Uh, that's true. Huh. That's true for me too, Michelle. Me too. Huh. All of us, I think. Oh dear. Um, ho hopefully, back. it's saved somewhere. Because <laughs> we had some really great conversations in the room I was in. Um, but we will we will move along and um, see what we are able to remember. And I know Sarah was actually taking paper notes for a while, so those aren't lost. <laughs> 
Um, so Sarah, do you want to, do you want to go first with a little bit of a overview of what happened in our room and then we'll. Oh gosh. So yeah, so much. It was, uh, yeah, really interesting sort of diverse perspectives actually. So there was, um, if I just sort of give a really kind of overview really of what I took out of listening to, to everybody is that, um, uh, we've got ideas around um you know kind of empowering people to to change the way that they think and and change in really practical ways going forward we had ideas about how um you know the the network can be around connecting people and lifting up education um that's already there we also had quite a lot of talk about the 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 role of the the body also that the the uh supporting people to kind of have that much deeper ecological connection within their body uh via various different methodologies it seems to be really important and then upskilling with things like inter, in, interpersonal skills um, and recognizing that it's for everybody at every age and also you know questions around people that are older and more entrenched in their views how do we get how do we bring that out in terms of encouraging people to sort of change the way they think about the world and also you know some some thoughts around um, the despair that a lot of people are feeling, changes happening, whether they like it or not, whether we all like it or not. And therefore, there, there is, um, you know, we have, we have to do this work, both to create an ecological civilization, but also to really support people to cope with the changes that are happening anyway. Um, so we might as well make it good, really. Um, so I'm sorry that that really doesn't capture the richness and loveliness of, of our room, but I'm hoping that that was sort of uh, good enough as an overview. <laughs> so um, can one of the other rooms uh, step in? Somebody who took notes in a different room? Um, Carrie, how about who was who all was in your room? Or Sylvia, were you ready to go? Well, I was going to ask whether Nia or Roberta or Nancy wanted to speak for our group. I'll just say that because I've got in late, I'd I'd rather not. I'd rather someone else go, but I can I can pitch in if need be if somebody else gets it going. Well, let me just add two or three things from from our group. Appreciating that there was um, a lot more said than that. Uh, certainly, that the bringing embodied uh, the a focus on embodied knowledge and wisdom was one of the the threads, the starting of listening conversations, appreciating that listening um, is far more important than, uh, than any kind of one way pedagog pedagogical uh, approach. The focus on what's actually happening in different parts of the world that is, uh, that's wonderful, that's working well, that, that can be scaled up. Um, and uh, spread laterally across um, across the planet, really. Uh, it wasn't spoken in so many words in our group, the idea that while no one of us can save the world, that we all can save places, but somehow that spirit was there. There was a, a fair bit of focus on how does um, the education take root and flourish, um, blossom really within any given community. Uh, what is the, what are, what's the bioregional focus uh, of an ecological conversation? The changing the language, um, learning a new language, uh, learning a language that is not the language of separation, uh, framing 
discussions, framing initiatives, being able to challenge the existing framing and reframing in a, in a way that it supports the flourishing of, of an ecological civilization. And really a lot of emphasis too on personal sharing. One of the things that was spoken um, in our group was how do we get better at scaling up intimacy? Because if it's not, if the change isn't happening within each of us as individual people and it's not happening person to person, then it's really not happening. You know, if those that web of of relationship, that web of kinship, that web of meaning isn't being strengthened all the time and and alive all the time. And and just further to that um, meeting uh, entrenched views that it was also the recognition that if people are suffering with respect to basic needs and are economically hugely disadvantaged, then their, their focus isn't in the same place about, you know, what can we do to, to alter all of this um, reality or, or world. And in the subcontinent of Africa, that there are many, many communities where um, it was acknowledged that climate change wasn't even in vocabulary of um, what's important to address. So, um, but very limited. Nia, add to that. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, add to that because I come from a reservation, and so we have 53% unemployment rate. So our priority is not to, uh, you know, look at all these various ecological things. We're really in the process of healing from 500 years of colonization. And so the way we look at it is that when we heal from colonization, it really means going back to the way we were. You know, in other words, we were earth people and our voice has been significantly diminished to a point where we are a whimper at this particular point. But the more we heal, the more we get in touch with our core essence as people of the earth, I think that itself will activate so many different things for us at every level of our community, not only in the way we govern ourselves, but our educational systems. And we'll become more immersive and veer away from the language of disconnection that we find in the English language, which is agent, action, and object. And also recreate our own identity as an identity of Earth people. So for us, it's... it's a uh, I tell my students that it's uh, a marathon of 360 miles versus 22, but we're starting, we're getting there. And so we realize that we were human at one time and we can all regenerate our own humanity. And so that's our goal. Wow. So powerful from all of you. Um, our group had me in Portland and Heather, I, was it Heather, I think in, um, in South Africa and Kari in Australia. So intercontinental and uh, among the themes were that there's disparity between different cultures in the educational offerings process needs and all of that and South Africa trying to work with decolonization and then of course we have those problems in the United States and Kari mentioned there's uh, similar things in Australia um, and I don't have notes so I'm going to leave it there for now. I thought of one more. Oh. <laughs> so mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, there was also the idea of, of growing up what we need uh, because what exists isn't just going to say here take over on Friday but um, growing up the, the seedlings of what needs to happen and um, I had recalled uh, there was something called unschooling in the United States I don't know if that's worldwide 
I didn't do that, but I heard about it and just an alternative. And um, then there's in the United States, there's charters for better or for worse. And that would depend on all the context, whether that's, but just growing up alternative um, ways of thinking and being. And the embodied thing reminded me that there's another group I'm part of on DTN and someone had made a link to, you might know what I'm talking about, but I can't put my finger on the name of it, but it's, uh, I think it was Earth Literacies and somebody had an offering on there, um, Viola Davis, anybody know Viola? So I know Viola from some other DTN things and I saw her course and another person who I didn't know wow, here's the photo of her course and it's working with kids and it's that embodied business. It's like learning earth embodiment from someone who's a somatic practitioner and exercise physiologist or something like that. And I thought, wow, how wonderful that would be. Thank you. I'm so sorry I was late and I normally would just keep my mouth shut until I know what's going on and what the dynamics are. Um, I am involved with uh, PESOL, which is positive education and student-led learning that comes out of my discomfort with the word unschooling. Um, although I have been schooling for uh, well over 20 years now, and um, uh, I'm in the Redmond, Washington, U.S. area, um, and very connected with all of that going on, and um, we also have a wonderful local group, a big movement here, you may have already talked about this, is the social emotional learning, mm -hmm. and a wonderful nonprofit uh, here uh, called Camp Kindness Counts, that's all about, uh, and, and there are a bunch of other groups around that I know of and nonprofits. Um, I, I don't know if anybody wants any connections or information or anything, uh, I'm happy to connect. Great, thank you, Jay. So yeah, um, we're just, kind of capturing some of the ideas that we were talking about through our breakout rooms. Um, oh, and thank you for that offer, Sylvia. That sounds really interesting. And I'm sorry, I just saw a hand up, Roberta. Yeah, I I think I would just add one thing that maybe um, hasn't been mentioned yet. And um, it, well, we did discuss it in our group, and that is that in the work of developing um, and regenerating bioregions, there is a lot of care and repair work to, to do. There's a lot of understanding uh, what harms have occurred and figuring out how to um, cure those harms and, and go a, in a new way. And in my view, there's no better way for any of us to learn children and adults than to do this project place-based learning. So I think we have a tremendous opportunity before us to completely reconfigure our schools, which has been something I've been trying to do from the inside <laughs> for decades. And it has just not gone anywhere to be, to be honest in the public school system they've changed very little in how they go about their business of trying to educate youth. And so um, I think where we find ourselves right now, it gives us an opportunity to take a new approach. And can we do that within the schools? I'm not sure, but can we start developing these learning experiences at the periphery of the schools? Yes, I think that edge is where that we can do this work. So anyway, I just wanted to add that. 
Lisa, I'm going to get to you in a second, but I'm just wanted to to really echo and resonate the project and place based learning uh, was a pedagogy that I studied in some detail, looking at you know what are the effective things, uh, and in this case, I was looking at, um, at higher education university level, and again, time and again, there are so many other things that students learn besides just the content when you get them into a situation where they can do project and place-based learning they learn those interpersonal skills they learn about sort of scenario planning and adaptability and just it's such a rich way to go um, and it's a tragedy that that has been you know pushed out and then not brought back in to so much of education lisa go ahead Thank you for that. Um, that reminded me of, maybe I'll come back to it. Um, just one other thing in our group was that um, uh, I was part of Cascadia Bioregion group last week and there was a presenter and so much of it was, these things need to start in your local area, local area, whole alphabet soup, whatever it is, local area work within mm -hmm. your within your area. So that's echoed theme throughout this. Mm -hmm. And what Michelle just said I, I was also reminding me um, uh, of that platform that's mostly in Europe that someone had shared recently, the where it's the game. Um, oh, I'm uh, blanking on that name. Yeah, yeah, and I, I peeked at that. I went down the rabbit hole, looks really interesting. I didn't see anybody local. There was somebody in Vancouver, BC. And I thought, huh, huh, huh. And I wondered just to mention it, that's all. Thank you. Could you could you repeat, because I think two people were talking when you said the name of it, and I missed the name of what you were talking about. The game. Climate, climate Fresque, Michelle reminded me of it. Someone had posted, uh someone had posted Ooh, I forgot I who it. someone posted on the dtn mm -hmm. a couple two or three weeks ago and it's sort of a nodding anybody heard of this you haven't heard of it should i talk or no could somebody uh, write it because i still can't really hear it's climate michelle something. just did it's in the yeah, chat it's, it's in the oh, chat okay. all right okay gotcha. f-r-e f-r-e-s-k it was sort of uh mentioned as a like an interactive uh, building of basically solving the climate problems in an interactive, not board game, but card game kind of format. And apparently it's had some really good results, but it's mostly in Europe, not completely right now. Thank you. Thank you. Michelle, I'm, I'm wondering if in closing, given that we're nearing the hour here, yeah, if we might close, I, and forgive me because you may have a, a, another close in mind, but if you don't, I wonder if we might close with people just saying what you have found or what you have gone to the education commons for mm -hmm. that you're not finding in any other group on the DTN. So whether you're a part of multiple groups or not, what is it that you are finding or are seeking in the education commons that's distinctive? You want us to say it or put it in the chat? Either one. I'll say it. I don't have any other DTN groups yet, but of all my other groups, this is the first place where I've been with fellow educators thinking about it from a systems system change perspective. And I feel really uplifted by it. That is heartful and, and analytic at the same time. I would echo that same thing. Um, what I don't hear it often in education because we're stuck in systems of disconnection. And I love the idea of figuring out ways to transcend the separation that we have structurally and systemically and actually recognizing that that always reverts back to the fact that 
it depends on how we frame it and uh, you know culturally and in terms of paradigms and the way our world views. And so I, I love those discussions because as an indigenous person on a reservation, we um, we have to look to the broader culture to to validate the way we used to be. And so it encourages us to continue the 360 mile marathon that we've begun. Well, I'm not a school educator. I am a passion educator, though, and I came to this because I'm always looking for savvy colleagues to help catalyze a new kind of social change movement. And the themes we've talked about here are very much what I have in mind, mindset change, all of that. Well, I can pop in. Um, I think when I came to Education Commons, I, I had this this hope that oh, we're going to create courses together, um, and then and then sort of realized oh, that would be a whole lot of work, and I don't really have the bandwidth. Um, but it's still, you know, I have this vision of that's a thing that could happen someday. Um, maybe not this year, maybe not next year, but someday. And um, again, just really, uh, as with everywhere on DTN, but in particular Education Commons, just just noticing the level of uh, both deep thinking and real heart centeredness. Um, just it's it's an inspiring place to be. Oh. I'll follow on that, Michelle, because I, I'm i here uh, as an educator who believes in the power of education, but I also would very much like to develop a, a course uh, a, or create a school, or I don't even know where I want to go, but I have started an outline. And every time I get a chance or get an idea, I just start fleshing out a little bit more of the outline. And I, if anybody at any point wants to just maybe form a small group to start looking at that, <laughs> I've got a starter, I got a starting point, uh, but it, it is very important. As I said, our education system, our current education system is failing our children. They need a whole new kind of education very quickly. Uh, we need to make a shift for them so that they will be ready to inherit the earth that they are inheriting. And so um, I, I would like to, I would love it if this could work into a collaborative project where even just on a small scale, we could start something like that. So, mm -hmm. I'm in. <laughs> I'm with you, Roberta, on all of that. And Michelle too, the idea of working together to create coursework. I'm working on my own creating coursework at the moment, but called on the community for, you know, getting some, some feedback and advice into that because that was happening right then. But to me, it seems like the, the problems we're facing are so complex um, and so, so much and so fast. And the speed of things is so quick that it, it feels necessary to really, um, seep beyond the, the idea that any one person actually can really do much on their own in a way. I mean, like I know my mind as good as it is and as much as I've learned and as hard as I've worked at learning all that stuff and as great as that's been, it's like, I have this little tiny piece of this giant puzzle. Um, and I really feel the deep need that I can address my, you know, what I, I know, but it fits into these other places and begins to bring meaning to the larger puzzle as do other people's pieces. And so I really am seeking that, that shared creative and shared, um, I guess it's a shared cre creative process for, for looking, you know, like renewing education or, or I don't know, something in there. 
Can can I ask a question? I know we're over time now, but um, does anybody know whether Jeremy because is is Jeremy working on a new a new book, an ecological civilization book? Is there going to be a course to accompany that book as well? I don't know that definitively, but it's certainly a question that I'll put directly to Jeremy and get the answer for and and post. Um, Post the answer. Yeah, Brown. it would it would be useful to know because you know if if he's already got you know a course planned, um, then obviously we don't want to be reinventing wheels. Um, yeah, that that would be quite useful to know, and then you know see where where gaps are that we might signpost people to or develop new courses or yeah. It's, it's I much, know did. Oh, sorry. It's a much bigger question than we can address, but over time, perhaps can. There's courses which meet all sorts of different needs in different situations, and then there's an underlying structured agreement about key concepts and attitudes and processes, ways of going about it that are fundamental that would be shared across all of them. And perhaps we can get particularly mm. helpful in that latter thing. I'm going to channel Jeremy here too and say, and let's not leave it at conceptual awareness, but bring to that exploration of conceptual awareness an animate awareness, mm -hmm. what that means to embody that um, and encourage that and live that. Um, and you know, one of the things that's sort of sharpening for me as I listen to everybody today and I'm encouraged by what everybody has said is that, you know, in the simplest um, and most abundant sense, I mean, maybe we can think about the education commons as being a place where we refine fractals. We refine ourselves as a fractal in the ongoing unfolding of patterns in this world and we identify courses for whom and programs and initiatives that are collectively a larger fractal than any one of us and we we bring those up uh you know amplify their presence mm -hmm. uh, the awareness of them make it easier for people to add their own fractal energy to that larger fractal um, we encourage people to look at, at how one could be an absolutely splendid fractal within the bioregion in which we're living and, uh, and interacting all the time with those around us. That, uh, that's a very simplified way, but maybe a way of kind of holding um, all that we might do within the, the education commons and, and keep us really at that in intimate relationship with one another, you know, always respecting that it's in the relationship with one another in the commons that we're encouraged and emboldened and enlivened um, and strengthened. And um... oh. Well, I just going to add the one thing I did hear from Jeremy, because um, I uh, asked the question specifically on a recent webinar that he was being interviewed. And um, in the new book, The Ecological Civilization, there's going to be quite a large focus on education. So I'm really, really looking forward to that. Could I ask that somebody, if it comes out in the States before the UK, that somebody <laughs> buys me one and posts it to me? Because <laughs> we had to wait quite a long time for the previous one. Oh. <laughs> we'll send it through the... I'm sure that this, this network will make it well known to everybody very quickly, I'm imagining. So it'll be all in good shape. Yeah, really looking forward to that. Yeah, reading um, the Web of Meaning was so delightful for me. I mean, it was it was a, a dense read, but it was just delightful to just kept 
I just had the feeling repeatedly over and over. Oh my gosh, I've been on this path. I've I've studied these people. I he just put everything. I I just felt like we were on. You know, he was on the same path in many many ways. It felt so almost like being home to to read it. So I I just I really found I found a home of thought here in this network. So um, just to let y'all know, uh, the promised question and answer session about how to use Mighty Networks is coming up in 23 minutes. <laughs> and uh, between between now and then, I, I need to like have a little break and stretch my legs. So I, I'm happy to stay on for maybe another three or four minutes. Do we want to do like one last kind of just go around with a couple of closing thoughts or words from each person if we can do that pretty quickly or are we feeling complete as we are I I, I think we should not do that Michelle I think we okay. should do the benefit of the time to prepare for your next session and extend our thanks to you instead and one of the things that I will commit to uh don't look for it today don't look for it to tomorrow um <laughs> in part because I'm completing all kinds of coursework with the Zer <laughs> and other things that are happening this week, but certainly within the week, okay, I will commit to um, gathering from Michelle whatever recording we're able to, to have got and chat that we're able to save from this session. I will commit to reviewing it and doing a summary um, post as an update on the Education Commons. And I'll commit to putting more information about the Designing Resilient Regenerative Series um, a Systems series of courses that's already underway and happening in 191 countries as we speak. Um, put Post an update on those course offerings in the Education Commons. And we'll also commit to getting answers to those questions from Jeremy and put that update in. So, uh, Michelle, thank you, thank you, and thanks to everybody on the call today. You've, you've really um, <laughs> sharpened my focus and uplift me and encourage me. So, thank you. Thank you all. Lovely to be with you all. Bye bye. Thank you all so much for being here, and I'm looking forward to another conversation with this group. This is great. Thank thanks, you. everyone. Thank you. Well, okay, go and do your Q&A and I'll, um, I'll do the things that I promised.